Alright, in this video I'm going to go over the, the, the uh, health check script that's only for eDirectory. It will, you can run it on a, any server with eDirectory that includes a DSFW server, but it will only do the eDirectory section of a script that I've also talked about before, the, the DSFW um, health check script. So this, or sorry, this one right here. This one will work on both DSFW and eDirectory. If you like one that's a little, that's basically the same thing for the eDirectory section, but without, not as big, a little more, you know, tuned to just the doing eDirectory. Then I do have another script that I've re been requested to to make, and it's uh, just the NDSD health check script. So you can uh, do that. Um, you can, if you would like to, just download it. You just, you know, you can w get it like this, and this is the name of the script. It's just the 1.0 NDSD health check. Uh, 1.0. So if you download it, um, make sure you make it execute it. You know the chmod plus x, and then the name of the script. Um, and it, you might want to also do a dos to unix on that script. So um, this is just in the home directory. If we look, we can you know see it there. If we like, we could have it in the bin directory. I believe I also have it there. Um, let me just go over some details of this script. The NDSD health check. Um, so let me give you some things on here. So we'll formatting's off a little bit there. All right. So first, email. Uh, if you'd like to to email you no matter what, or not email you, this is the setting. Email depends on your configuration. If you, a bind is required or not uh, on your email server. Um, for most people I work with it, it, it is able to do it but it's fairly uh, high security a lot of times they you have to bind it for for an email to go out so it, it might not work for you um, if, it, if you are then you can enable this so that it, it lets you send you a report you know get basically send you the log no matter what happens um, if it's good or bad uh, if you have it run into an error or not if you run into an error uh, if, if you'd like it so it doesn't send you a, an email except for an error, here's an email on error. Um, so if you set that to one or or zero. So if you can read this, it's you know set to zero or remove the one to disable this option. So basically, you don't even have to set it to zero. If you just remove that, then it will. It's the same thing as setting it to zero. Uh, so just think of it as you know one enable, zero disable, or nothing disable. Uh, so that's the email options. Scheme, schema sync. If you'd like to enable this, you can. Uh, this is just doing a set DS trace with a star SSD and a star SSA. Sometimes you still might might get an error because just it's a timing issue. Make sure it has enough time to 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 hit all the servers. I've lengthened the time that so that the script takes a little longer to run. Hopefully, it's enough time to finish the schema sync. If you get an error. It might not really be an error. Maybe if you just go in and uh, um, you know run the options again uh, or run the script again, it, you, it might be just fine. If you'd like to run the local repair, that's an option. As you can see, it's NGS repair dash R. That's all it's doing. Uh, if you'd like to display your partitions, this is an option as well. Uh, let's go ahead and enable it so you can see what it looks like. And uh, if you'd like to do a search for unknown objects. There's this. If it's by default, I have it set for anonymous. Uh, so anonymous display of unknown objects, uh, or non, basically a display of un, of unknown of unknown objects. And if you'd like to do it by anonymous bind, basically, I probably should have came with a better name. I just copied and pasted it and put anonymous in front of it. So this this is just doing an anonymous bind. If you'd like to be prompted. Uh, to do a bind because what it's doing is an LDAP search for an object class of equals unknown. Um, if you're a public user or you have disa disabled anonymous bind altogether, uh, if if or you know so if pu public user doesn't have rights to read uh, object class um, or like I said anonymous binds disabled, then this isn't going to work for you. And you're going to have to set this to zero. Uh, I, we can uh, if you if you want to run this as a script. It's best to have it, and you have are able to do anonymous binds. This is the best way to run it. I should, should say a script and a, a cron job. If you want to run this as a cron job, so it just runs automatically. 
Um, let me show you what it does. It, it's just going to prompt you if you set that to zero. Um, otherwise, uh, some things your email to just put in your email address, a, a comma or a, or a space. Either one will work for um, the delimiter between email addresses. If you have multiple people on your team, say to email, uh, and then here's the option reset your log. So it does create a health check log. If you like to reset it each time it runs, go ahead and set that to one, uh, like that, or just so it doesn't get too big is a big part of it. <laughs> and then, uh, um, but if you'd like to keep a you know a log of every time it runs, go ahead and set that to zero. Uh, it will reset though if you do get get an error and, and be at that that spot. But if it runs successfully, uh, if you know every time it runs successfully, if you have that set to, to zero. It'll you know continue to add, and if you get an error, then it will reset it eventually. Um, so this you know logging your to sysvol. All it's doing is just letting the syslog sys know that it's uh, running the script. It's not really putting anything in there. So let's just go ahead and go with that, and we'll run the script. Here we'll since we're in this directory. So as you can see, since we're not doing anonymous bind, we need to uh, log in, and it is LDAP uh, syntax, so there, it's a comma, and not a dot, and then we're going to enter our password, and again, that's for the the um, search for unknown objects when it's done. As you can see, it's checking for the dib, oh, for, we'll start from the top, it gives us some information about the server, the date, IP address, name of it, versions. If it's a Red Hat server, it will tell you if it, that it's a Red Hat version as well. If it's OES, it tells the OES e directory versions. As you can see, it's kind of taking a little while, giving us some time specifically starting off right in this level here, starting the, the schema synchronization since we have that enabled. Hopefully, it'll get, have enough time for it to run. Obviously, it looks like it did. If it didn't, it would give us, uh, it would point out, print like the last 15 lines. Of the trace, so we could get an idea of what uh, error was in, encountered. Um, we can see we can see the dash p. So the dash p, and this I can't get rid of this. It's something with the way in order to pass the the q the quit um, things. If you know if you run the and just for dash p, you have to press either an enter or a q or whatever. Anyway, so I can't really get rid of that, but it gives us an output of the number of replicas. And if we and it lets us know that there's seven, it will only display five. If we would like to for the to see more, and we know there are more on here, uh, I'll show you what what to what we can do to edit that. Um, here's the root DSC search. It's, it's and let me show you something on this as well. Um, this should have a replica of root in order for it to to function properly uh, to to search this properly. Uh, if it doesn't have a replica root and you still like it for it to work, I'll, I'll show you that as well, what, what you need to do. So let's first start with the ng-square-p. So in order for it to work, we have to pipe it, send it out the output to let us know that where it's going to end. Um, this is the ng-square-n, here's the dash p. What, if we read this, so it displays five partitions. If we have six, in this case seven, we'd want to place an enter. Right before the queue, so we would just type in enter uh, there if we would like to see that. Otherwise, if you just want to have to display the total number, then then don't worry about that. But that's an option there. That's how to do the dash p. Now let's go on to the LDAP unknown objects here. So if we do search for do a slash LDAP search, it'll bring us down to this line, and this is for the anonymous bind. This down here with the user. This is our authenticated bind like what we did. What you would want to do in the in the, the base, and we can see here and in here, is say we if we wanted to start at the O and we have a replica of the O, we can just uh, press I for insert and then type O equals novel, say, or if uh, there's another container, say um, OU equals um, corp comma o equals novel anyway wherever we want to start the base for the unknown objects from that place down we could um, modify it at that location or at this spot in the script so if you some options for you to do here uh, overall uh, hope the script 
if if you got have any suggestions, please let me know. So go ahead and, and pop me an email or make a comment, and I'll uh, look at at them and maybe uh, at least put an option in there for to uh, for the script. And if you have a way to make it better, let me know that as well. I'm not very good at scripting, but hey, I'm trying to put something out there to help people out. So if you have better ways, I'm always looking to learn. So. All right, I appreciate you watching us. Uh, watch this. Thanks. Bye.